will be f1 that is equal to sigma 1 into y into y1 into dA. So, sigma 1 into y1 into sigma y into dA, but y into dA is nothing but it is the moment. Okay? So, we are getting y into dA that is equal to 0 that is the first moment of area about the centroidal axis and that is basically nothing but 0. So, we get dm is equal to sigma 1 upon y1 into y square into dA. Thus, the total moment of all the forces acting on the various elements composing the cross section forms a couple which is equal to the bending moment m. This total moment is called the moment of resistance and it is denoted by what m. m is equal to sigma 1 upon y1 into sigma y square dA. But I know and you all also know that integration of y square dA is nothing but moment of inertia i. So, sigma y square dA will be replaced by moment of inertia i. So, our final equation we get it is m upon i is equal to sigma 1 upon y is equal to sigma 1 upon y1 will be replaced by what sigma upon y. So, we get our equation upon m upon i is equal to sigma upon y is equal to e upon r. So, finally, we can say that our bending stress equation is given by m upon i that is equal to sigma upon y is equal to e upon r. This is our bending stress equation that we have derived, right. If you want to remember, you can remember it is m upon i. So, my sigma upon y, sigma is also replaced by f, okay. It, 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 this is also the notation for stress and if it is bending stress, it will be replaced by f of b, okay. So, m upon i is my f upon y is phi and e upon r is r. So, my phi here that is your bending stress theory where, where m is called as moment of resistance, moment of resistance or it is also called as maximum bending moment. Now, how to calculate this particular maximum bending moment, right? So, to calculate this particular maximum bending moment, we have got different cases. Uh, first case, suppose we assume that we have got a cantilever beam subjected to a point load W kilo Newtons. The span of the beam is L. Now, we know that at point A that is free end, the bending moment value will be 0 and at support the bending moment value will be maximum because we have done shear force bending moment. So, you all know right. So, you will get the value of bending moment maximum at the support. So, at support if I take the bending moment what it will be force into distance up to the line of action L. So, maximum bending moment will be W into L and the nature of the force is hogging. So, minus W into L but negative sign does not uh, play role over here. We just want the value maximum bending moment that is W into L. Second case is simply uh, cantilever beam subjected to a uniformly distributed load W kilo Newton per meter for a span of L meters. Okay? So, what will be the maximum bending moment? Again, the maximum bending moment will be at B and that will be nothing but W into L point load and the distance L by 2 because it acts as the center. So, W L square by 2. These all are the standard formulas that should be on the tip of your tongue. Similarly, if we have got a simply supported beam subjected to a central point load of W kilo Newtons, right? that means this distance will be L by 2 and this will be L by 2 as it is a central point load. So, maximum bending moment will be at center because at support the value of moment is 0. So, moment at center that is W L by how will you find out center load. So, reaction will be W by 2 W by 2. If I want to take the moment at the center what it will be 
w by 2 into what is the distance l by 2. So, that will be equal to w l by 4 okay. and then the fourth case is a simply supported beam subjected to a uniformly distributed load of intensity w kilo Newton per meter okay, for a span of l meters. So, this is w kilo Newton per meter. Now, we know that when the load is acting, when the load is acting at the center, then the u, uh, uniformly distributed load, if uh, concentrated load is there, it will be what? w into L. So, w into L. Now, if I want to find out the reaction, what will be the reaction? Because at center the concentrated load is what? At center the concentrated load is W into L. So, what will be my reactions? Half W L by 2, W L by 2. Now, if I want to take the moment at the center, what will be the moment at the center? W L by 2 into what is the distance? L by 2. And as it is moving like this, it is trying to sag the beam, it will be plus. Okay. Similarly, similarly, this much UDL is there, right? Now, this UDL we have to consider. So, W is the UDL and the distance is what? L by 2, because from center this distance will be L by 2, right? So, W into L by 2 will be what? Concentrated load and it will act at center. So, L by 2 center will be L by 2 into L by into 1 by 2 that is L by 4 and it will try to rotate like this. So, it will produce hogging moment, it will be taken as negative. So, what you will have W L square by 4 minus W L square by 8. So, if you take LCM W L square minus W L square divided by 8, so you will have W L square by 8. So, the maximum bending moment when we have got a simply supported beam subjected to uniformly distributed load is W L square by 8 and it will act at the center. Now, basically these all are the standard formulas that you should know at the tip of the tongue, but suppose in case they do not give you the standard uh, loadings. In that particular case, you have to find out the support reaction, you have to calculate shear force, you have to calculate the point where the shear force value is 0 and then you have to calculate at that particular point the bending moment value. So, that will give you the maximum value of bending moment. So, I now think it is clear what is M, M is nothing but the maximum bending moment. Okay? Now, we come to the second term that is I. What is our second term? Second term is I. I basically is what? I is basically moment of inertia and moment of inertia, which moment of inertia you have to take? You have got I x x, you have got I y y, but where does the failure take place? The banding takes place along the neutral axis, right? So, you have to take I x x that is where the banding takes place. Okay? So, I is moment of inertia, sigma that is F b that is nothing, sigma is nothing but F b okay? and that is nothing but bending stress. What will be the unit of bending stress? So, F b that is equal to what? If I take these four things m y upon i. right? Now, m y upon i what is the unit of moment? Newton mm. What is the unit of y? mm. Okay? So, and what is the unit of i? Moment of inertia mm to the power 4. So, this mm, mm will cancel. So, the unit of bending stress will be Newton per mm square. Okay? Now, we come to the last term that is y very important term y. Y is nothing but the distance of extreme fiber with respect to neutral axis. Right? I will take two sections, one will be a symmetrical section. What do you mean by the term symmetrical section? 
symmetrical section is the section which shows the immer, uh, mirror image when it is cut from the center. So, this section is basically a symmetrical section if the depth is d right. Now, what are my extreme layers? So, this layer that is a b that is called as an extreme layer at the top and c d is called as the extreme layer at the bottom. Now, if I want to find out the c g what is the c g d by 2 because d is the depth. So, d by 2 from top and d by 2 from the bottom. So, what is y? y is nothing but the distance of the extreme layer with respect to neutral axis. What is neutral axis? Neutral axis is nothing but the axis which is passing through the centroid and at this particular layer there is no compression, no tension. Okay? So, this is the neutral axis. So, y is nothing but the distance from extreme fiber either from top or from bottom. Okay. Now, if you remember in the very first uh, uh, starting I told that we have got compression and tension and compression and tension basically depends upon what the hogging and sagging. Right? The layers above the neutral axis are subjected to compression and the layer below neutral axis are subjected to tension if the moment is sagging. Okay? So, when the section is symmetrical, the y will remain same, but if my section is a t section, if my section is a t section, okay, like this, what will happen? If I cut it from the C g or the neutral axis, C g and neutral axis are same, what will happen? what will happen? The value of y will change, right? So, I have to specify that this is y c and this is y t if the bending moment is sagging, okay? because the y value will differ as it is a unsymmetrical section when we are cutting it, you are not getting the mirror image. Right? So, you have to specify y c and y t. Now, why this is important? Because our equation is what? m upon i that is equal to f b upon y that is equal to e upon r. Right? Now, if I want to find out the value of f b, I will use my this particular equation. So, what is the value of f b? m y upon i, but when it is an unsymmetrical section, I have to specify that it is bending stress and compression. So, I have to say F B C and this will be Y C. Okay? And similarly, F B T. So, my Y will be Y tension upon I. Okay? This is very important that is you have to consider f b c at that time you have to consider y c when it is unsymmetrical section and b t you have to consider y t for tension. Okay? So, this is important when you have got an unsymmetrical section. Okay? Then our E. What is E? Young's modulus of elasticity and what is R? Radius of curvature. So, I think this is sufficient for today's lecture. We will be studying modulus of section in the next lecture. Similarly, some important definitions that I have just explained that we will do it in the next lecture and then numericals how to find out the bending stresses. So, we meet in our next lecture with all these three parameters. Thank you.